So here is what I have determined. Our target, she's a company employee, a mercenary just like us. And it seems she is aware of who we are and that we have taken up her bounty. Also, she has described herself as a fan of ours. This is a, we are literally recapping something which happened a second ago. Fucking good. They don't, really don't take you for clever, do they? Katori seems to be taking it seriously for a change. No, she doesn't. She's still pouting like some fucktard. If she's on this ship, then it's going to be dangerous. Nami nods in agreement. We have to heighten our security measures in our quarters. You can't just have something which scans the opening of the door. That's too difficult, is it? Hey, computer, can you just, like, I don't know, make sure that no one else enters the room? Impossible, sorry. You're fired. It's not... Ugh. There could be traps waiting for us in here. Those drones I saw, all of them were equipped with non-lethal weaponry. So does that mean she isn't out to kill us? It doesn't appear to be that way. If I were to take a guess, it's all just a big game to her. So this is about feeding her own ego, yes. She thinks she's proving how talented or resourceful she is. When Katori starts taking things seriously, she go Oh my god, you said that already! 30 fucking seconds ago you said that! I get it! This game is recap the game. It's like, you know that thing we told you 30 seconds ago? Here's it again in 30 seconds ago, just so you really remember what we were talking about. Well, she's a mercenary like us, so her reputation will be everything. And what better way would she be able to prove her own capabilities than by beating us her own idols? Exactly, she said she was a fan, as I mentioned before. I guess this means this job is going to come down to a battle of wins. Wins? I, that probably says wits, right? Yeah, wits. If we fail, then she will make sure to humiliate us in front of the entire company. Our reputation would be forever tarnished. I have heard about the workers in the film industry who messed up once and were never able to find a job again. Life is a mercenary and no different from that in this part of the galaxy. Yeah, no different at all. One involves shooting people to put on film and one involves shooting people to bounty. If you cannot, that's the only similarity there is. It was a bad start. I realised that both made sense. If you cannot get task job done, if you cannot get task job tasked, job done, then you might as well look for a new job. So we understand it. I thought we were one of the best in the business because we had we were so much better than everyone else. Surely that's not true because there are people worse than us who were still working on it, not giving up. So we understand her motives and we know that she is somewhere on the ship, but we can't simply confront her on the open. Are our quarters like a part of a huge, huge ship then? Whatever. Right, Akane is an alias, as we determined earlier. There is no concrete evidence linking to her to her crimes, so if we confronted her out in the open and beat her senseless, it would seem like we're just attacking a fellow employee for no reason. Oh, fuck you. Cameras. Literal cameras. Cameras. Like... <sighs> okay, yeah, sure. Cameras don't exist in the future, apparently. Which means we need evidence first, even though they already said there were. That is precisely the problem. She says that she drifted in an onboard company ship. If we can find more information about her, then we can determine who she is and maybe find a way to beat her. Is it Stan? She probably knows where our quarters are. She can afford to wait and let us come to her. You said this about her ego, so perhaps we can bait her like that. If you got her to confess and recorded it, then you could go forward while claiming the bounty. On the other hand, if it became public knowledge that the single highest bounty in the galaxy is on this ship, it would throw everything into chaos. Then don't show them the private recording you made! <sighs> That's your evidence when you randomly beat the fucker up in the middle of the street! Like... Every single team here would be mobilising to take her down, and in that chaos she could easily slip away off to cause mayhem or somewhere else. So we have to handle this from discretion above all else. If we pull this off, then we're set for life. No one is going to breathe a word of this to anyone outside these quarters, okay? Both of them not in agreement. We haven't even checked for bugging equipment, we've just said them what we're going to do. Good. Good! That's an order from your captain. Katori puts her hand on her chin. We have to remember that she's confident enough to reveal herself to us, so she would obviously have traps in wait. This is going to be a difficult approach. It would be the best to have time to think about our next move. Exactly. For now, I'm going to dedicate our meeting adjourned. Dedicate? Oh. 
Maybe that's the lingo I'm just unaware of. I want everyone to be ready for battle at a moment's notice. I will be setting the security systems to red alert. If even a rat finds his way under to our quarters, we will know about it. Acknowledged. Oh, they'll fucking find some way to get around it. Security level on red alert. <clears throat> cool. Make sure to check your rooms before you go to bed. We do not want her to strike when we're most vulnerable. While we should be relatively safe in our quarters, it's better to be safe than sorry. The captain declares this meeting to be adjourned. You already did that. The two of them leave the room. The AI begins to speak. I will keep an eye out for any reports or unusual problems arising. Oh, she'll fucking sneak on and miss the AI and go, Oh, it is because I'm magical. And it'll be like a series of Sherlock. How did you do this? Don't know. We're not explaining either. Hey. My guess is that she would not be able to remain out of trouble. Or she will be applying incredible restraint on her compulsions. I agree. It's been rather difficult to relax since what happened. I thought that dumb music was about to start again. I was about to physically cry. I'm here at the pool with Nami. Because of course you are. She hasn't left my side since Akane had singled me out. For the longest time, we just sit here together not saying a single word. <sighs> yeah, sure. I want to ask you a question. Ask away. Why is it that you chose to walk away from us when you thought you were being followed? After time, I thought it might have just been those mercenaries from earlier. People around here do take such things personally, you know. Even if it was just them, there is nothing needlessly risking. There is no point in needlessly risking yourself like that. It's because we're a dick. It's the real reason. Well, if we had remained a group, they might not have revealed themselves and simply waited for a better opportunity to strike. So I thought the best course of action was to lure them out myself. Akane did reveal herself, though. Next time, please let her try and let your crew know if you're planning something like that. She isn't out to kill you, but still, what if she decided to stun you, then capture you? Then there was nothing we could have done, it would have been a very early game over, wouldn't it? Oh, joy. <sighs> that would really put things into disarray for us. I'm sorry, Nami, but I really did feel that, that was the best course of action. Well, we have to accept the captain's orders. And you did try to protect us, exactly. I sit down at the water's edge, just letting the warm water soak my feet. Nami relaxes in much the same way. Katori did a, did pick an excellent place to put this ball. You can get a perfect view of the cosmos from here. Why isn't she here? Isn't she here like all of the time? Why is it that space is so fascinating to us? Because you're simpletons. <clears throat> I mean, it is like fascinating, but you know, any chance to attack you and whatnot. Even in the olden days, the olden days, mankind looked up to the stars with wonder. That same look of wonder is in Nami's eyes as the twinkling stars shine in front of us. What is this, a nursery rhyme? You're still searching for it, aren't you? Yes, an answer. Have you worked out the question yet? No, I have not. Then you're not going to find out the answer. Here I am, chasing a vague feeling of longing after so many years. There's something out there among the stars that I'm looking for. I do not know what that is. There's some desire in me. Something I cannot comprehend. I ask myself every day. What is that I'm chasing? What does all of this mean? That's why you'll become a pilot, isn't it? I know. You said before. Cool. Of course, she was one of Earth's best. No one back on Earth could have imagined that things would turn out like this for me, and not for Nami either, although my time spent in that career was unforgettable. It did not give me the freedom that I was craving. Unforgettable? You mean forgettable. There is... There is a big difference between I didn't like it, it was forgettable, and I didn't like it, it was unforgettable and amazing. Ugh. You could be only be in a few places at once. I wanted, wanted more. I wanted to spread my wings and fly across the cosmos. I wanted to know if I could find what I was looking for out there. She lets out a small sigh. I guess in the end what I'm chasing is some enlightenment. Do you think that there could be a profound experience out there, one which could change how you saw everything in life? It is a wide universe, Nami. That experience is out there somewhere, I'm certain of it. But it's a little too hard if you don't look where it is. Perhaps don't find it all at once. Perhaps something is... Perhaps it is something that you slowly accumulate over time. Perhaps this is an unlighting experience. Is merely the... Some of everything you've ever done? This is wonderful writing. I feel so... I, I stopped paying attention halfway through the sentence. It's that enthralling. Perhaps it is. Normally, Nami isn't so open about her thoughts. Are you afraid, Nami? 
Eh, of what? You are worried about me. Well, of course I am. Something happened to our captain. I doubt this captain would remain for it together. So it would be wise to ensure that nothing happens to you. Akane obviously does not desire to harm you in any real sense. But even so, if it had been someone who was actually out to harm you, then what would have become of all of us here? Well, you would have died because we left all our jobs. So, you know, begging doesn't do itself now, does it, Nami? Even if I was not here, I think both of you would be fine. <sighs> you're some of the finest mercenaries in the business. <sighs> but I understand where you're coming from. Although she's exceptionally intelligent, Nami does not need does need guidance from time to time. People with these eccentric personalities tend to be more difficult to work with if you do not understand them. If Akane tries to strike again, I promise I will not isolate myself on purpose. All of us need to be untied, united, if we're actually going to beat her. I was going to say, yes, you probably would need to be untied. Did she actually fight you, or were those drones the only weapons she used? Just drones. But judging from the way she moved, she is definitely going to be a dangerous opponent. She slipped into the shadows as easily as a ghost might slip into through a wall. Whoever she is, she knows how to use her environment fully to her advantage. Everything about her is strange, to say the least. If you were going to pick one detail about our bounty, which stands above all else, what do you think it would be? So her whip that she didn't use, or her ego, which we saw. What was the question? Her ego, like, how could it possibly be her whip? <laughs> Whatever. I would say that the most defining trait is her ego. What makes you say that, Captain? Well, not only did she come out of all this way just to mess with us, she was also confident enough to reveal herself to me. If she had not done that, then she would have been able to take us down at her own pace. But it's as if she's deliberately giving us the heads up. Above all else, it is her ego that defines her. She will be, she will deliberately leave behind clues, slip up and taunt us. Because she believes in her superiority over us, even if she's supposedly our fan. Yes, that does make sense. Why would you bother travelling all of this way if you didn't think you could emerge the victor? Because you're fucking mental, that's why. In addition, she's not only challenging just you, but all three of us. Our reputation precedes us wherever we go, so if she thinks she can somehow eat all of us together, beat all of us together, sorry, the words are so small, I don't know why you would make them this small. Though no matter how skilled she is, she must have an incredible ego. That is my thought exactly. With that in mind, we can discern how may she may behave in the future. Good thinking, Captain. No matter how, what way this plays out, we still have to remain careful. Even if she looks like she does not wish to hurt us, I couldn't give our monkeys. Nami pulls her feet out of the water and wanders out into a nearby chair. She lays herself out, looking at the stars. I do not know what I would do if we lost you. Uh, you'd probably just, I don't know. Burn. As I said earlier, begging doesn't do itself. So I want to resolve this bounty as soon as possible. I understand how you feel, Nami. You don't get to see Shaki's face. I don't care. I do not think I could stand the feeling of losing either of you. We have all been together for a long time. The idea of us carrying on if one of us were missing. Give me five seconds, an open airlock and Ritori, and I swear one of our members goes missing. Well, it just does not seem plausible. I get out of the water too, walking over to Nami. She suddenly seems to get very awkward. Captain, you're standing fairly close to me. You... Yep, yep, this is how talking works. I can't stop myself looking. Oh, fuck you. Are you feeling lonely, Nami? Oh my god. Yes. She just lays there awkwardly, unsure of how to express her feelings. There's no need to be shy then. I know how you feel. I, I know you do. Then why don't we let our passion talk? As I walk over, she spreads out. Oof. Oof. Spreads out over me was all I needed. Well, Nami should be in high spirits now. <laughs> you cut through paper with that scissoring. Oh, instant regret saying that. I wonder where Katori is in the midst of all of this. She's probably in her room numbing her. I wander up to her room and knock. Katori, are you in there? Deathly silence. Katori! I find the security on the door isn't active. 
This is a guy. Walking inside, I found that she's nowhere to be found. Katori, are you hiding amongst all these animals? She probably could be. There's enough of them to bury someone in. There's like seven. Come on, Katori. You know better than to ignore your captain. She's been kidnapped. Still no response. She must not be in here then. I cannot help but take a moment to look more closely at the stuffed animals. Every single one of them is in a different planet we have visited. In her own way, Katori is collecting little memories from across the cosmos, because she's seven. Katori's is interesting in the sheer chaos. The yeah, cool. um, room is rather plain, considered to theirs. Yeah. Awesome. That bear was from the one planet we stayed on. This is like saying, oh, we have different personality types. What's they missing? So, yeah, forgive me if I'm just skipping past it. Alas, I'm not sticking to the task at hand. Don't worry, I have a space bar that cures that dumb little disease that constantly manifests within your brain. I still need to find Katori. Wait, I do not want to make myself panic, but maybe Katori has already been attacked by Yakane. How plausible would that be? It's plausible. Akane could have sneaked in here somehow, but if she did, how come there were no alarms triggered or anything? The entire security system is fine-tuned to trigger upon in the slightest suspicious thing happening. It's too unlikely for me to consider it. <sighs> Fine. In that case, yeah, why not? It isn't plausible. It's been eerily quiet around here. If Akane somehow managed to get inside the quarters and attack one of the thing, that would be putting on the same level as a ghost, and Katori would have relayed the alarm right away. I know the Katori is no pushover, so this just doesn't make any sense. So I think I have a firm grasp on my enemy's capabilities, and I know these quarters better than anyone else on the ship, so it's just not plausible. The probability of it happening is incredibly unlikely. It's not plausible. The probability of it happening is incredibly unlikely. This writer was... Okay, that's it. It's been confirmed. The writer is being paid by word. Those are two sentences which say exactly the same thing. So I shall just put it aside for now. Katori could just be having a swim at this hour. She does not have a lot to do at the moment, so she would be trying her best to stay active. It's then I hear noise coming from the simulation room. Perfect score. So we just worried for no good reason. Good. Good! Katori! There's a washing machine I need to stick your head in.